Welcome to the Nutramedical Report live for Thursday, the 7th of June, believe it or not, 2012. That a very scary number, 2012. Of course, we do not believe in the Mayan end of the world garbage. But we want to tell you that some things happening, some signs happening that people need to pay attention to. And if you're, as I am, a Messianic believer, if you're a believer of any kind and believes in the Bible, or if you're not a Christian and you just look at the signs, uh, the signs that have been showing up, especially the signs have been analyzed in this amazing book by Jonathan Kahn, who's a Messianic uh, pastor, a uh, rabbi in uh, New Jersey called The Harbinger. And uh, the ancient mystery that holds the secret of America's future, uh, Jonathan, this is quite a... Uh, an interesting writing style, the style to write between, uh, a book that is, in a sense, a fiction, but it's based on reality and the truth. Uh, and also it's based on a discovery that you made sequentially, literally, I think, directed by the hand of God to actually see these different signs of the harbinger and the specific scriptures and their presentation right before our very eyes that you can talk about. And I imagine this would be a, an excellent documentary film with the actual pictures of the artifacts involved. It would also be an excellent uh, movie because I think it would grab people and make them realize, just like the ancient um, Babylonians and king of Babylon, King Nebuchadnezzar, whose blasphemous name meant king of kings, he would have to admit that your God must be God. So uh, how did you come upon writing the Harbinger and, of course, the journey to see the Harbinger signs? Mm, wow, it's a, Bill, it's a lot. You're you're full of rich stuff. I have so much I want to say to what you just said. Uh, okay, first of all, uh, it came. It began after 9/11. You know, and we I, I'm up here. You know, where where the ministry is located, a few about 20 minutes outside New York City. My wife was actually supposed to be at the World Trade Center that day, um, and you know, I was praying afterwards, and I was led to a certain. Uh, section of Isaiah when when it records the first warning strike that happened to the ancient nation of Israel before Israel was destroyed. And so I'm led to that. I found out later that David Wilkerson of Times Square Church, he, he gave a word to his congregation, and he gave it, you know, he, he said, this is from the Lord, and it turned out to be the same scripture that would become the center of the harbinger, kind of like the decoder of the harbinger. The same one. And he's the only one I know who at the same time who got that. And so a little while later, I'm standing at the corner of Ground Zero, and I my, my focus is drawn to a particular object that became the first puzzle piece of an unfolding mystery that kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger until I mean, it just blew me away. And I start, it became the, the beginning of the harbinger. And I began, you know, I shared it at the you know the the worship center that I lead the Jerusalem center here in Wayne and I shared it and people were blown away and said this message got to get out got to get out so uh, I was led a little while later to start putting it in in written form so I started writing it down and then I was led as you you know you you uh, well as I was actually as I was writing it there came the the collapse of the economy which and there was a whole nother stream of mysteries behind this thing and and you know and actually when I first started Speaking about the harbinger, I was I said some things that later came true. So um, I started writing it, and as I was just about finished, I was led to change the format. I originally wrote it completely nonfiction, straight out, but then I was led to write it, you know, to get it to as many people as possible. I mean, the harbinger has a lot of deep mysteries in it, and to get it to as many people as possible, I put it in the form of a narrative, and so. It is done through a prophet speaking to another person, revealed with these nine kind of mysterious seals. Each one has a mystery that's revealed, and but the thing is, ninety. That's only the framing. That you know that makes it very it makes it a very easy read. But it is the 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 ninety percent of it is nonfiction. Is the revelation of a prophetic mystery that is affecting everyone in America, everyone listening right now, and everyone's future. Yeah, everybody, not just in America, in the world. Yeah, the template oh, yeah. I like, absolutely. The template I like to think of, and people should, that one of the things that is really lacking in the overall quote Christian Church of the ten thousand plus denominations is the idea of the messianic roots, the Hebrew roots, not just Jewish roots, but the Hebrew roots to the Bible and to the two houses of Israel and God's promise. He would take the stick of Joseph or Ephraim and the stick of Judah and put them together again. And he would do it at a time when he would have witnesses come forward at the time of the end that would actually give warnings, a final warning to the world, and then tell them that that warning was conditional on a repentance like Nineveh, but if there was no repentance, the judgment was coming. 
And uh, that's what we're seeing literally transpiring right now. People don't, they should understand and they should feel in their gut when we have the situation like right now with our two so-called candidates of the Democrat and Republican Party, we're basically in a time like ancient Israel where we're deciding on things that are going to determine not only the future of America, which I consider, I call it Ephraimerica. Uh, the modern Republic of America is like a bookend of history. The first republic was Israel. The last republic is America. And the republic is the only form of government that's accepted by God, which means you have no king, but your rights don't come from a constitution or from the courts or a justice system. They come from the creator God that made all of us of every skin color of every nation. And what we've done is we've wandered away from that. We've substituted all kinds of horrors and pornography and, and corruption and evil and warfare of every name. And then the Satanism that's perpetrated through every corporation now in the military and our foreign policy. The perfect example is the current occupant of the White House. And he says one thing and does the exact opposite. So he's fooled a lot of people in the last election. We have a, uh, a time of great judgment about to come on the world. And the harbinger is a perfect example of God's love for us to warn us that judgment's coming. Yeah, well, the harbinger is, and we were talking before, to sum it up, the harbinger is an ancient mystery. It goes back as you said, goes back to Israel, ancient Israel, and it, it, it lies behind everything that is happening from 9-11 to the war on terror to the collapse of the American economy and the world economy to the crash of Wall Street. And it is so specific that it actually gives exact dates as when these things happen. It actually gives the exact words that, and actions of American leaders before they happen. And it goes back to ancient Israel, the last days of ancient Israel, when it was, it was uh, really, it was heading for judgment. It was going to be destroyed. And just be, before that happened, nine harbingers appeared in the land, giving warning to the people, nine prophetic signs, warning. Well, the amazing thing is, the eerie thing is, that those same nine harbingers are now reappearing, but now to a, to a different nation, appearing to America on American soil. These nine harbingers are appearing in precision, exactly. Some have in, some appeared in New York City. Some have appeared in Washington, D.C. Some have involved the highest leaders of, in the land, even to the office of the President of the United States. Even that's part of the mystery. It affects everyone's pocketbook. It has affected the whole world. It contains the secret of the future. And, it, and it's amazing. These mysteries go back thousands of years, but they're all manifesting now. The ultimate question, is God sending a warning to America and to the world uh, now in a prophetic course, and that is what the harbinger is. Yes, and the dialogue, which is really interesting, because I've read through the uh, the main chapters, it's, it's kind of amazing how you've done it. So you drew pe draw people in to actually see this dialogue between this journalist who's very skeptical at first, and then sees that the person that they're interviewing um, uh, literally is, is, is dealing with a, uh, a prophet that's unnamed, uh, but the prophet keeps on appearing uh, almost supernaturally in different places to pass seals onto the uh, person and to give an interpretation of that, but bringing them through a journey. In other words, they have to try to want to discover yes. the next seal and the next sign of what it means. Uh, yeah, when you went yeah. through this process yourself now, tell us some of the, in a sense, some of the seals and harbingers you first discovered, because when you prayed, you were, there were specific things revealed to you about this scripture, yeah. and how everything was actually has a physical representation. This is not just a, oh, yeah. I decide to write a book. Right. This, is kind of, this is a, I believe that in many ways this is a supernatural book, that God has given you a very serious warning to the population of not only America, but the whole planet. That we're teetering toward annihilation, and God's judgment is about to fall. So when we come yep. back, we'll hear yep. much more from I'll Jonathan Kahn. Sure. And we have Jonathan Kahn. The book is called The Harbinger. And, of course, it's a New York best seller, uh, sellers, uh, sign, uh, best 
New York Times bestseller list. <laughs> I'm so so excited about this because <laughs> yeah. it's it's very rare that we have someone that's not only speaking what I call geopolitical or historical truths, but what I call spirit words, uh, and that's what what God is speaking through. And sometimes, as you read through the book, which is written in an amazing way, so that you can you can plow through it and get into deeper things without necessarily, uh, you know going through all kinds of cross index books and get into deep eschatology the the scripture though is very very plain and the signs are so clear no one can dispute once they read this book that america has not been given a final warning um, uh, yeah 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 so it, tell, it, tell it, us your your yeah. walk in this and how, how did sure. you actually get to writing this I'm sorry. Was it? How, how did you get to this writing this? Uh, well, amazing it was you know, yeah. It be, it, thanks. It began you know at at ground zero itself. You know, when I'm standing there and I'm pondering stuff, and I and I see this first sign, and what and it leads me to a particular scripture, which is Isaiah nine ten. And and the thing is that, and here is the you know here's the setup to to understand the mystery of the harbingers. Um, the, the setup is in the la- It's the last days of ancient Israel. They have known God, but they turn from God. They've offered up their children on altars to God. They've gotten into into to sexual immorality. Uh, they 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 have shake their fist at God. God sends the morning prophets. Finally, He allows something to happen. It's the first uh, absolute sign of coming judgment, and it's a pattern in the Bible. That first sign is an initial. A breach of the nation's hedge protection. There's an attack that's allowed on the land. God allows it. It's temporary. It's limited, it's contained, you know, and it's a sign. It happens a number of years before the nation's destruction. So it's a, it's a little, it's a kind of a taste of what's going to come if the nation doesn't turn back. It's a shaking, a wake-up call. And so he allows this enemy to make a strike in the land. And then the, then the strike is over, and then there's, a, there's a, a grace period where the nation hangs in the balance. Well, the thing is, Israel didn't repent. They didn't turn back to God. They shook their fist at God. And instead of repenting, instead of coming back to him, they made a vow. And the vow is recorded in uh, the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 10, Isaiah 9, 10, which is the key to uncode the harbingers of the book. And that's where it begins. And they say to God, they basically say, they say the bricks have fallen in this attack, but we will rebuild with hewn stone. The, the sycamores have been cut down, but we will plant cedars in their place. And what they're saying is, God, you're not going to humble us. We're not going to. We're not going to come back to you. In fact, we're going to. We're going to come out against you and defy you, and even more strongly than before. The bricks have fallen, but we're going to put strong. We're going to rebuild with strong stones. The sycamore has been cut down. We're going to. We're going to replant with stronger trees, right in the place of the fallen tree. So they're shaking their fist at God, and what it's going to do is, it's going to set in motion uh, the the beginning of the end. The uh, process of these harbingers of warning are going to appear and manifest in the. Land, and they're going to reject it, and it's going to, and it's going to be calamity and calamity until the nation is destroyed. And so, what does it have to do with America? Well, America is now the nation that has known God, that has turned away from God, that has has done the same exact thing, has offered up its children in abortion, and has is embraced sexual immorality. It has shaken its fist at God, chosen other gods, and now what happens? The first harbinger is the breach, is the nation's head of protection is breached. The first harbinger appears to America on September 11, 2001, with a shaking of America, with an enemy is allowed to make a strike. We thought we were invulnerable, but this this disproves it. They, it's a limited strike, just as with Israel. It is contained. It's a wake-up call. But America, instead of waking up, uh, it does the same exact thing that ancient Israel did. The America responds in defiance of God and says, we're going to come back stronger. We're going to rebuild, we're going to come back stronger, and we're going to not come back to God. If anything, since 9-11, America has gone farther away from God. Uh, Almost much farther definitely. away. From, much, much farther. Much you know, farther. It, yeah. Even, that, when we have the, yeah. even when we had previous George Bush, uh, George W. Bush, uh, he claimed to be pro-life, but very little pro-life things are really transpired during his presidency. Now with, under Obama, we not only have massive increases in funding of abortion, Right up to uh, the to to normal delivery, but we also have funding of foreign uh, abortion. We also have uh, new cell lines released for genetic cell lines for for stem cell research. Other horrors. I want to just read uh, something that echoes exactly what you said. I received uh, 13 years ago, part of a uh, book that I received most of it actually 24 years ago. But I just want to read a portion of it. It's called the first chapter of the scroll. And I want, want to start off, it, the whole thing takes about 18 minutes to read this first chapter, but I'm only going to read a couple minutes of it. 
Uh, the first uh, paragraph is the words of William, son of William, in the line of Aaron, who was among the physicians of Colorado, which he saw concerning America in the days of Clinton, president of America, two years before the year 2000. And I'm going to jump forward to uh, another section of this. And it says, You, O America, who oppress the poor and sell the, seedy, the needy nations of the earth, the seeds of famine, I will send you death. You, O America, who have set yourself up to be the God of this world, I will bring you very low. And your murmurs for mercy will cry to me from the dust and ashes of your nation. You, O America, have not only shed the blood of my littlest ones, but have denied care to your poor and elderly. You have forced the heathen nations to kill their little ones, and I see their blood upon your hands. It cries to me for many lands for justice. How long, O Lord, will our sisters and brothers die in their mother's wounds at the hands of America and its multinational corporations? Have I not declared that you must not make any of your children to walk to the fire for Moloch and Baal? But you did. And then I'll go to the last two uh, uh, paragraphs. Weep, you nations afar off. Woe, woe, woe. Great was the daughter of Babylon. By her sons of the illuminated one and by their stock market, many nations and peoples have become rich. In one day has come destruction to the cities of glass and steel, like mountains of light. This is what the Sovereign Lord says, Go once for more to unto a hard and arrogant people, a righteous people, full of purpose and plans with my word on their lips, but a curse in their hearts. Turn you sheep from the pathway that leads to destruction, uh, and become my people again, and I will heal, turn to you and heal your land and set my tent over you, and you will be my bride. But if you do not soon turn, then in the day of my wrath, I will set my face against you, and you will become only a whisper in the darkness, O America. Now, when was, when was that written? 1998. Interesting. Did it, um, interesting. Well, well, here it, that again is like pointing to nine eleven. You know. And yeah, exactly. And to see what God's showing is He's literally giving from multiple witnesses a time for repentance because you see the new world order, which is a global satanic order, can't occur with a godly nation. The only nation that was founded under God in the modern era, a republic, not a democracy, which is a mob rule, is America. And America has turned, and has turned sequentially, and, and so far, it is just like ancient Israel that has mixed so-called worship of God by many pseudo-Christian denominations, but it also has mixed it with demonism, with this idea of worshiping liberty to the point where they can kill the unborn, they can now pass laws like the Obamacare, which literally is planning to putting a chip in all, every child that's born and every adult. I mean, I can give you the page number and everything reading the Obamacare Act, and the, the idea of death panels, and even if you have private insurance, if you're 75, you're submitted to a panel where they can decide that you do not get a clip of an aneurysm in your head or a cabbage or, or chemotherapy or anything. This is the kind of nation we have now, the most powerful nation in history that decides to kill the unborn and the elderly. This is the judgment that's coming. Back in a moment with Jonathan Kahn, The Harbinger, amazing book. Welcome back to the Neutral Medical Report, Clay and Iron Show. And the reason why it's called Clay and Iron, well, 24 years ago, I was told, actually, uh, based down on the concrete, that that's the name of the books that I would, I would be dictated and what I should uh, call the ministry when God called me forth from being a doctor in 2004 to do this full-time starting in February 2005. It went from doing a Wednesday evening show for entertainment on Clear Channel with uh, Mark Allen Curry, a Emmy award winning comedian called Laughter's the Best Medicine, to serving God 100% of the time rather than just part-time. Although I'm always a Messianic believer, I started to uh, be able to touch many more people. And I think you've touched a lot of people with this amazing book. This is not just entertainment, uh, Jonathan. I can tell you, having read it, it's impossible to put this book down. It really is. You start reading it, and it's like, oh, my gosh, this is infective. I've got to read the rest. What's the next chapter? Um, and that's probably why it's caught on so much. I'm sure when you have people to start to read it, they're, they're, it rings something in their spirit that makes them feel almost like a joy, but it's almost like the scroll that I've just read, a sort of small section of the small scroll, which basically is sweet in your mouth because you know God's in it, but it also turns your stomach sour because you know there's a judgment coming because we don't see repentance. I don't see repentance on the part of the church itself, the overall church, although there's many repentant people, 
I don't see repentance on the part of our government leaders. And I see this quickly heading toward catastrophe. Is generally, I mean, it's exactly that. It's that mix. On one hand, it's, it's a scary thing because it's a wake-up call. It's talking about what's going to happen, and it's giving the exact, you know, exact signs that are happening now. On the other hand, because it is doing that, it's like the unfolding of a mystery, which is people find fascinating. And so that, that hey, God is in everything, and God is in control. That's the, some people actually you know, have, a, have a, a security that, that God is in all these things, I mean, amazingly so. And I think that is, that is one of the reasons that it's caught on. I didn't, you know, Bill, I've never written a book before, so um, I didn't expect that it would become the, that the first week it would become a New York Times bestseller. You know, and, and, and it's been it's been ever since. You know, so um, it's been amazing. Except that I I didn't happen expect it to happen that quickly, but I did believe I had no question that this was this was the Lord's word. I don't I don't take credit for it. It just came, um, and so I did know it would go forth, but I didn't expect it to happen this quickly. And you know, basically, when I went to the computer to type this up. You know, it just flowed as if the book was already written. That's how, that's how, I mean, I was just almost like a third party, you know, just watching it. It just went right, well, I'm, you know, I'm right sure through. Well, I'm like the ancient prophets. Uh, whether it was Amos, it was, the, as you say, the, uh, the fig uh, uh, harvester, or Habakkuk, who was a cook, or uh, some of the others. There were some that were illustrious and some not so illustrious. Uh, people like Jeremiah was always considered an outcast. Uh, even among the prophets of the day, uh, and uh, always being treated by even other people that call themselves prophets, like Hananiah. That's why I like to, uh, to you know, to use the analogy of we have a, uh, a series of false prophets now sitting uh, either in the White House or trying to become candidates for it. Like the one who thinks that he's a fulfillment of the White House prophecy, uh, Mitt Romney, uh, who believes that Joseph Smith's prophecy is going to be fulfilled in him. Uh, and then we have Obama, I consider the abomination that <laughs> we have in our White House that has pushed forward not only abortion but gay marriage and, and uh, distorted views of, of American foreign policy and even calling us not a Christian nation anymore. This is very disturbing. And people don't understand this doesn't just deal with our spiritual future. It deals with our economic future, our physical security. It deals yeah. with every yeah. aspect of our life. And when Israel was destroyed, it wasn't just, it wasn't just a spiritual falling away, well, too bad you know you're not going to go to heaven after you die no no this was their economy was destroyed their people were ravaged millions died and they were scattered they remembered all over the world and uh yeah, well, the, the harbinger touches on all, yeah, on all those realms. It touches everything, the ec economics, political, cultural, you know, all that. Um, and basically, I mean, the, the first part is that all, every single one of these nine harbingers have been, have been played out. It's almost like an ancient drama that's of judgment that's replaying. And, it's, and many of them have, have involved American leaders and everything. And it, it's all in that, that ancient verse of Isaiah, everything it's spoken. I mean, you know, we don't have time to go into it, except to, so I'll just touch a little bit, and that is, yeah, for instance, it talks, about, it talks about the stone of judgment, or the, it's called a gazit stone in Hebrew, ah, yes. that a certain stone has to be placed on the ground of destruction. And what happens is this same, you know, this is like three years after 9-11, this, this biblical gazit stone, as, as in the ancient case of Israel, is placed, is low, is, brought, is chiseled, uh, actually chiseled out of a mountain rock in New York. It's brought down to New York City brought down to ground zero, laid on the pavement where the bricks had fallen. They put, they, they have a ceremony around the stone. Um, American leaders actually vowing vows of defiance, just like it happened in ancient Israel. And they have no idea what they're doing. And then, you know, it talks about, in the ancient scripture, it talks about that, that sycamore tree has to be struck down. It says the sycamores have fallen. Somehow, somehow 9-11, the strike would have to be linked to the striking down of a sycamore tree. It's a sign of national judgment. It's a sign of the uprooting, the coming uprooting of a nation. Well, could this happen? Well, amazing, in the last moments of 9-11, the sign of the sycamore, this is the sixth harbinger in the book, it appears in New York as the last tower is going down sends forth a beam and a shockwave across, you know, to it strikes an object right at the corner of ground zero. The object happens to be a tree. The tree happens to be the sycamore, the biblical sign. It is struck down right at the corner of ground zero. The people in New York make a symbol out of it. They put it on display. They call it the sycamore of ground zero. Um, they have no idea what they're doing, and nobody's trying to put these harbingers together. They're just happening. I mean, each one, it, the next thing it says, 
says that yeah, well, well, I won't even. We won't to, I'll just tell you this: the actual vowing of the ancient words that brought you know, there's a vow that brought judgment on Israel. It's the vow that that where they said the bricks have fallen, the you know, but we'll rebuild. The, the sycamore struck down, and the leaders of ancient Israel vow, actually publicly declared this vow. It brought judgment on the land. So this is ominous if this ever happened in America. But but this is the the ninth harbinger and the eighth harbinger. What happens is on the on the day after 9-11, America gathers on Capitol Hill. The government's going to make a, a response, a proclamation to 9-11. So it's very significant. One man is chosen to make that declaration. And that man is, to speak for America, he's the Senate Majority Leader. Represents the Senate. Senate represents the states. The states represent the nation. The guy is representing America. He goes up to the, the podium, uh, and, here, and all the Congress is gathered before him, day after 9-11, and out of his mouth, at the end of his speech, as he, as he reaches the crescendo, out of his mouth, he actually utters the ancient vow of judgment from, from ancient Israel that led to their destruction right after the strike happened in their land. He utters it on, on the day after 9-11. He said, Tom Daschle says, the bricks have fallen. He says, there's a word from Isaiah. Speaks to all of us. The bricks have fallen, but we will rebuild. The, the, the tree has fallen, but we will plant cedar. And, he, and so he actually utters the ancient vow, and nobody realizes at the time what he's doing. He doesn't even realize what he's doing, as you mentioned. He doesn't know yeah. what he's saying. This is prophetic. I mean, he yeah. doesn't know there's an actual, he speaks of a tree. He doesn't know there's an actual tree that was struck down. He speaks of the stone, that's gonna, the gazette stone's going to go up. He doesn't know it's going to happen. It's going to be fulfilled. He says, and he says, this is what we will do. This is what America is going to do. In other, and what's he saying? He's saying America is going to do Isaiah 9.10. It's exactly what he's referring to. It means okay, that our it. policy is going to be that, that of ancient Israel, which brought judgment. So it's ominous, and it's amazing, yeah. and nobody realizes what, you know, they don't realize, nobody's trying to put it together. It just happens. These are signs of what's yeah. coming. Yeah, and not only that, uh, these things actually had, fulf had fulfillment. Uh, yeah. And I think uh, you talked about this, that the Gazette Stone was actually placed in the One World Plaza, which is a replacement of the two towers. Yep. Uh, yep. And uh, yep. people need to know that in front of the Temple of Solomon, he had two brass towers, and it said on each tower, it says, it says, Jashin Boaz. And of course, in Hebrew, that means he shall restore in strength. And the falling of the two towers is a very ancient Masonic sign. It means the restoring in strength. And believe it or not, what they call it was the One World Plaza. One World Plaza. Does that sound like a globalism? Does it sound like <laughs> yeah, godly? Yeah, yeah. No. And right, yeah, in the, and right in the foyer yeah, yeah, yeah. of this new One World Plaza is none other than the Gazette Stone with Isaiah 910 on it. It all, it all began with that, with that stone. Unbelievable, isn't it? But it's there. Yeah, and people say, I want to go to New York City and see it. I think you have it. You should actually do a video of this. But, I mean, it's, it's just unbelievable yeah. that all they, these they, things actually yeah. happen. And God led you to put all this together in a way that people can understand it. That's amazing. Back in a moment, Jonathan Kahn, the Harbinger. Back. Welcome back, and you're listening to Jonathan Kahn. I'm sure Jonathan will be doing a series of these programs. Uh, Jonathan, I just want to ask some, uh, you're a Messianic uh, rabbi, which would be the best title rather than just pastor. You're a pastor rabbi. Yeah, I'm called uh, all that. <laughs> and, yeah. yeah. Now, uh, there's two houses in the house of, of Israel. House of Ephraim and Joseph is called one, which is considered the northern tribes, and the house of Judah and the half-tribe of Benjamin, or, which means the half-tribe of Benjamin, they, they, to build up the house of, which is what it, its title means. Um, I would imagine that you have Jewish background, is that right? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm completely Jewish, of Jewish blood, born of the tribe of Levi, and, and I'm a descendant of, of Aaron. Ah, very good, very good. And of course, I, you know that I have a Kohenic line on my mother's side as well. Although, okay. I probably wouldn't qualify uh, by Israeli standards to be considered a Kohen by their standards, even though my family have passed on the written documents right from, uh, you know, Moses right on down for... My great-uncle actually had the documents 25 years ago. They're older than the oldest living Bible. So, uh, 
They were well, back to Leban well, Lebanese yeah. uh, believers that were converted in the first century. The thing is that we're really seeing the preparation for America. And right now, this election, the 2012 election, is not so much about the Mayan prophecy. It's about God unveiling uh, a final time for repentance. And these uh, harbingers that God sent you through, I believe, are a time not just for America to repent. If you're in Australia, New Zealand, if you're in India, even if you're of other religions and you think you've got the way. The thing is, the early church was called the way. It wasn't a new church. Christianity is not really something new from real Judaism and real Hebrewism. It is just an extension or a revelation of it. That's why Jesus said, I did not come to abolish these scriptures or these truths. I came to fulfill them. Yeshua HaMashiach, the Father in the flesh, the uh, and that's one of the things that people don't realize. It's a continuum. It's not a new. It's not a new thing. It's a revelation of what has always been there. Well, uh, it's, it, well, it's it's not a new religion. It's not a new faith. It's not a new God. You know, it's right. the same God, same faith. Same, you know, the, but there's a new covenant, and that yeah. is, you know, Messiah has come. You know, it's a new. Exactly. You know, you could say dispensation, however you want to call it. It's a new. Um, it, it is the manifesting of everything that the Hebrew Scriptures were speaking about. You know, so they all come together. You know, it, it is the revelation, the manifestation of the promises of the Scriptures of Israel, and you yeah. know, Jesus has to be for the Jewish people as well as for everybody, or else it can't be for anybody. He's the Messiah. Exactly. That's the yeah. point. Is that's, that's the, the modern state called Israel should really be called the modern state of Judah, because God will not really call it Israel, which then takes its entire Abrahamic borders, until it becomes truly for all 12 tribes, not just those who are blood descendants, but those who are grafted in, become believers in the Most High God. Uh, yeah. And that's what people should understand, is that this is not a plan just for salvation of a, a racial group or a clique. It's a salvation for, as Joseph's prophecy was, the coat of many colors, I believe, was a prophecy that God would, like in the Oder Temple, uh, the Oder Court, he would bring in the peoples of every skin, color, nation, and language, and tongue, and bring them into his fold. Well, it is, I mean, it clearly, yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, the, the salvation and, you know, God is both universal and specific. He's universal because he's the truth and he's for everyone, uh, Jew and Gentile, every single one, you know, um, and he is also, he is also the God of Israel, you know, so he is right. specific, you know, specific land, specific people, specific promise, and yet right. it's to everybody equally at the same time, you know, he's yeah. called the, you know, in Hebrew, Messiah is called the, uh, you know, he's, he's He's the Or HaOlam, the light of the world, and he's the Kavod, Kavod Yisrael. He's the glory of Israel. So you know, right. it's interesting because you're talking about this because the Harbinger actually focuses on the ten, you know, the Northern Kingdom, which is the ten tribes. You know, right. um, so there's a lot of people in America. You know, I mean, well, a lot of different groups have been going, "Wow, that's what you know, you know, that link." That's here. Are. In fact, I refer to it and have been since uh, when I received the book 24 years ago to America as Ephraim America. In fact, when I traveled to 13, uh, uh, for, for a 13 uh, uh, city tour four times or 42 cities in Israel, that's what I presented that this is a warning to Ephra America. Well, uh, that yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, the, the harbinger, I mean, is is you is is taking the well, you know, I'm mean, let me say this, and you know, I didn't even. It's like some people say, well, look, he 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 took this and took this and put that together. I don't, I no, don't no. put anything. I mean, no, I mean, no. I, mean I, I, was, I read I mean, this I was, and I can tell you, whatever what you're what you're doing is not done by a man. This is done by the Most he, High God he, using a faithful prophet of the Most High God. So you're not just an author, Jonathan. You're a prophet of the Most High God. You're operating well, in the office of a prophet because even though you wrote this, didn't write it down like a scripture, like you say the book of Isaiah, you did, wrote it in a way to teach people to draw their heart toward God to realize, like, this is real. These are real signs. You can go to these places in New York and you can see the actual Gazit stone. You can see the sycamore. You can see how they replaced it with the new tree that they placed there near Wall Street. You can even go back and read the history of the Buttonwood tree, etc. You can find all of these signs where even the packs on the financial packs to set up New York City as the literally capital of the world. And even the financial packs are setting up now in Europe with the current planned collapse of the world economy this year is designed to make America the center of a new biometric world currency that will, and this is not a maybe, will be the mark of the beast. And it will come from America. And I've stated well, that for many years now, that the mark of the beast, and America has weapon systems that are so advanced that every nation shudders. And I remember talking to Russian scientists that worked at a number of places, Storage Tech, Lucent Technologies, and others that came over after Glasnost and Perestroika. And they told me, when we were working in the military, 
or in the Soviet nuclear forces, we were terrified of America because we knew they were leaking such information documents and even material to the Soviet Union. We knew they must have much worse weapons, so they never dared to think of attacking America. Well, the fact is America has weapons that are centuries ahead of every other nation and can call fire literally down from heaven without a bullet or even without a missile can destroy any nation in seconds. And that's what's so terrible. And the supercomputing power of America will be used as the mark of the beast. Unless there's repentance, America will force the mark of the beast on the whole world. Well, the 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 warning of the you know the warning in in this is that it's for such a time as this that uh, I say now we're watching America, which you know which had been founded on a Judeo Christian foundation, turning away from that foundation. And the Bible says you know that that if you turn away from God, you know you, the you know the blessings we've known have been you know it says righteousness exalts a nation, sin is reproached any people. So we are watching these things at the same time fall. You know, and the harbinger is a warning. I mean, oh, yeah. there are you know it's a it's a warning for such a time as this and it, it affects you know i mean it, there's some things that we can't get into now to, on this program but i mean but right now but the thing is that it they have such things as you know there's an ancient mystery that actually determined the very day of the crash of wall street i mean it's exact you know there's a it, not only the, the crash of the day of the crash you mean you mean in 2008 you mean the day of the crash 2008 and the other greatest crash in 2001 the exact the exact day of that it goes back to the to the sands of Sinai, I and mean, it's amazing. There is a mystery that it, that that is hidden in the foundation of America. There is a prophet, a prophetic word that was spoken on America's first day as a nation. That's coming true now, and it links up. It pinpoints the place. It's it's a mystery behind Ground Zero. I mean, that that actually links up also with a mystery from Solomon. I mean, it's amazing stuff. And this is not, you know, as you, you mentioned before, you're alluding to it. It's not a matter of hey, I. Feel this, and this is my opinion. This, these are exact things. You said you can go to New York. You, you, you said a few times this could be a documentary. Well, well, just to tell you, Bill, they, I don't know if you know World Net Daily on the web, but they, yes. they, made, they made a documentary of it. It's called the Isaiah nine ten judgment. I mean, the book is the Harbinger, um, but the and the documentary is the Isaiah nine ten judgment, and they did it for that reason that you can actually see all these things, you know, um, all, everywhere. I mean, so it's amazing. And actually, that that you know, the it's the that documentary became the number. They told me it became the number one faith video in America. So it, it, that's spreading too. I mean, both things are spreading, and I believe it's spreading because it's a crucial time now, and that this is the time for the word to get out. This well, is cru- America example. is is at a crucial time. We're hanging in the balance, well, and it's and here we are, His people. It's, it, we have to be the lights. Exactly. God gave me two books to release 13 years ago with the Prophecy Club. Out of the two, the Lord told me that even though it wouldn't be as popular, it was more important. It was called Abortion to Armageddon. And the taking of the unborn, the using of cell lines from embryos, the abomination of putting our children to the fires of Moloch and Baal. God said it's like sticking the Creator God with an, in, in, in the eye with a needle. That's what, that's what he said to me. So what we need to understand is that when we see both, both candidates for president who are not truly pro-life. Yeah. In any way, shape, or form, we're in trouble. We're, dealing with, we're in major trouble. We're, we're in That's trouble. Now, yeah, now, now, Bill, could I just, would I tell people how they can get the book? Absolutely. Uh, they can get, you can get the Harbinger everywhere where books are sold, from Amazon to Walmart, CBD, everywhere. And you can get the Isaiah 910 video on Amazon.com, okay? That's, that, that's the main stuff. We need to get you back on soon for regular <laughs> programs. This has been high energy. Hopefully it <laughs> has changed high. your perspective. Hopefully it has stirred your spirit to not only taste the sweetness of that scroll, but maybe turn your stomach sour. May it put your face down with sackcloth and ashes before the most high God because judgment is coming to America and our world.